Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. In this video, we'll be exploring the exciting world of music theory and technology by comparing Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro and ChatGPT. Music theory is an important aspect of music composition, performance, and education. Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro is an innovative music app that helps musicians and composers analyze and understand harmonic progressions in music. ChatGPT, on the other hand, is an advanced AI language model developed by OpenAI. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro and ChatGPT can be used to analyze jazz progressions and understand their harmonic structure. We'll be exploring the features, functions, and capabilities of each tool and comparing them in terms of accuracy, speed, and ease of use. So if you're a musician, composer, or music educator, this video is for you. Let's dive in and discover how Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro and ChatGPT can enhance your understanding of music theory. All right, so let's see what this thing even knows about Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. What is Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro? Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro is a software tool for music composition and analysis designed to help musicians understand. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Can you explain the map in Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro? The map in Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro refers to a graphical representation of the relationships between different chords in a piece All of right, music. All right, that's cool too. Okay, that's cool. Can you analyze a harmonic progression for me? Sure. I would be happy to help you analyze a harmonic progression. Please provide the progression you would like me to analyze and any specific questions or aspects you would like me to focus on. We're going to do a Roman numeral analysis of the progression. Do you know Roman numerals for harmonic progressions? Yes, I am familiar with the use of Roman numerals for analyzing harmonic progressions. In music theory, a Roman numeral analysis is a way of representing chords in a piece well, of music. That's pretty theory. impressive. So let's see what she can do here. Awesome. Let's try progression then, shall we? Of course. Please provide the progression you would like to analyze, and I will perform a Roman numeral analysis for you. So I'm going to export all of me from iReal and import it into Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. This is an easy song with no modulations. And there you go, our analyzer picked up on the key of C major, uh, the functions, and it figured out that there are no modulations and some secondary dominance. Uh, no sweat, really, for Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. Here's the harmonic progression for all of me. And I'm just pasting the progression from Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. A full harmonic analysis of a song involves analyzing its chord progression, tonality. Hmm, that's not really uh, specific, is it? The chords in the progression are primarily dominant seventh chords, with the exception of C6, F6, F minor 6, C major 7. Primarily dominant seventh chords, and some exceptions, C6, F6, not actually very useful. The tonality of the song is predominantly minor. The tonality of the song is predominantly minor. What does that even really mean? Uh, this is the key of C major. Well, whatever, maybe it's my fault. Perhaps I should have been more direct. Try creating a harmonic analysis of the following progression. This chord progression can be analyzed using Roman numerals as follows. Okay, so it's showing me line by line. C6 is the one, that's pretty good. Uh, E7 flat nine is the four seven flat nine uh, not really. E7 flat 9 is actually the 5 of 6. It could have at least said it was the 3 7 chord or something like that. Um, that's not the correct analysis. Are you aware of secondary dominance and how to label them? Yes, I am aware of secondary dominance. In tonal music theory, a secondary dominant is a dominant chord, typically 5 7, that leads to a chord other than the tonic one. This can add additional harmonic tension and instability, which can be resolved by resolving to the target chord. In the chord progression you provided, the secondary dominance can be indicated by labeling the chords with their corresponding Roman numerals, followed by a slash, and the chord they are resolving to. 
All right, so now for the E7 flat nine, it says that this is the five of four. It's actually not. It's the five of six, not the five of four. In the key of C major, E7 flat nine is not the five of four. What is it? In the key of C major, E7 flat nine is not the five seven of four. It is an altered dominant chord, most likely functioning as a secondary dominant, resolving to the tonic of the two chord I minor seven or as a chord substitution for the five seven chord. It's so weird that she understands the theory but it's labeling all the chords incorrectly. The two is not A minor, not in this key anyways, and E7 is not a substitution for the 5-7, which is also not B7, by the way. But the A minor 7 is not the two chord in the key of C major. Do you know what it is? My apologies, you are correct. A minor 7 is not the two chord in the key of C major. It is the six chord often functioning as the tonic of a 6-2-5-1 progression in C major. That's closer, but A minor 7 is not the tonic if it's the 6 chord. It's just a good substitution for the tonic. Do you know what a chord substitution is? Yes, I am aware of chord substitutions. A chord substitution is a chord that is used in place of another chord in a chord progression to create a different sound or to better support the melody. In this case, a minor 7 is being used as a substitution for the tonic chord C major in a 6-2-5-1 progression in the key of C major. So I guess this is kind of goes to show that you can kind of recite and regurgitate theory all day and maybe not know um, exactly what you're talking about. Very good. So what's E7 flat 9 in the key of C major? In the key of C major, E7 flat 9 is an altered dominant chord typically functioning as a secondary dominant, resolving to the tonic of the two chord I minor seven or as a chord substitution for the five seven chord B seven. The flat nine added to the dominant E seven chord creates a sound of tension, which is then resolved by the following chord. That's wrong. Listen, the E seven flat nine is the five seven flat nine of six. E seven flat nine is the five seven of A minor and A minor is the six of C. So E7 flat 9 is a secondary dominant that resolves to A minor, the 6 in the key of C major. A minor is acting as a tonic chord, substituting the C, which is the 1, the tonic. I apologize, you are correct. The E7 flat 9 is indeed the 5, 7 flat 9 of 6, which functions as a secondary dominant of the 6 chord I minor 7 in the key of C major. Thank you for correcting me. So what is the E7 flat 9 in the key of C major? In the key of C major, E7 flat 9 is a secondary dominant chord, also known as 5 7 flat 9 of 6, which functions as a chord substitution for the 5 7 chord B7 in the progression. It resolves to the 6 chord I minor 7 acting as the tonic, substituting the 1 chord C major. Much better, but you got something wrong. E7 flat 9 is not a chord substitution for the 5 7, B7. It's a secondary dominant, the 5 of 6. I apologize, you are correct. E7 flat 9 is a secondary dominant chord, not a substitution for the 5 7 chord B7 in the key of C major. It is the 5 7 flat 9 of 6 and serves to temporarily tonicize the 6 chord I minor 7 before resolving back to the 1 chord C major. Thank you for pointing this out. Now, what is an E7 flat 9 in the key of C major? In the key of C major, the E7 flat 9 chord is a secondary dominant, also known as 5 7 flat 9 of 6, meaning the dominant 7th chord built on the 5th degree of the 6 chord, I minor in this case. It creates tension and leads the listener's ear towards the resolution to the six chord, I minor. Hey, very good. So what is the Roman numeral analysis of this progression? The Roman numerals analysis of the progression is. All right, so now it at least looks like uh, she's learning. And she's at least saying now E7 is the five of six, although she did label A7 as the six minor seven flat nine. And didn't she say earlier that uppercase Roman numerals were used for dominant chords? Um, and A7 is another secondary dominant, by the way. That's better, but now the A7 flat nine in measure five is not a six minor seven flat nine. There's no such chord. A7 flat nine is another secondary dominant. It's the five of two.
I apologize, you are correct. The Roman numeral analysis of the progression would be. All right, she fixed it. But now the D7 in measure 13 is wrong. Way better, but the D7 in measure 13 is not a 4-7. A 4 chord in the key of C major is F, not D. And although the 4-7 exists in blues progressions, that's the wrong answer because D is the 2 in the key of C major. But a 2 chord is minor, and this is a D7, which is a dominant chord. So your best bet is to think of it as a secondary dominant. So if the D7 is a secondary dominant, how would you write it using Roman numerals? The D7 in measure 13 can be written as 5, 7 of 5. Excellent. So what is the Roman numeral analysis of the following progression? The Roman numeral analysis of the progression would be. And she got stuck on the 4 minor. Um, okay, don't give up. Now, you wrote the D7 in measure 13 as a 1 minor 7 of 5. But earlier, you told me correctly that the D7 is the 5 of 5. All right, so I've either completely confused her or she's going to the bathroom or something. Let's try this again. What is the Roman numeral analysis of the following harmonic progression? Oh my god, what's going on? That's completely wrong. Have you forgotten everything I told you? Can you try again? My apologies, let me try again. Here's the corrected Roman numeral analysis of the progression. Hold on, this is the key of C major. The first chord is a C6, which is a one chord, the tonic. Do you know what a tonic is? Yes, I am aware of what a tonic is. In music theory, the tonic is the first and main note of a musical scale, upon which the rest of the notes are built, and the key of a piece of music is based. My apologies for the oversight. Here's the corrected Roman numeral analysis in the key of C major. Okay, but now you forgot that E7 flat 9 can't be the 4 7 flat 9 in the key of C major. It's a secondary dominant. Do you remember that? Yes, I apologize for the mistake. E7 flat 9 cannot be a 4 7 flat 9 chord in the key of C major, as you correctly pointed out. E7 flat 9 is a secondary dominant chord, which means it temporarily tonicizes another chord other than the tonic. Here's the corrected Roman numeral analysis with the secondary dominant indicated. OMG, you're never going to pass the harmony test. Listen, the E7 flat 9 is a secondary dominant. That's correct. But if you label it as the 5, 7 of 4 in the key of C major, you're saying E7 flat 9 is actually a C7. The 4 of C is F. The 5, 7 of 4 is C7. The E7 flat 9 is not the 5 of 4, but the 5 of 6. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand now. My apologies for the confusion. The correct labeling for the E7 flat 9 chord would be 6, 7 of 6, not 5, 7 of 4, as it is tonicizing the 6 chord. Are you just repeating what I said, or do you really understand the concept? I apologize for any confusion. Yes, I understand the concept. The E7 flat 9 chord is a secondary dominant that tonicizes the 6 chord A minor 7, so it should be labeled as 5, 7 of 6. Thank you for explaining it to me. So what is a D7 in the key of B flat major? In the key of B flat major, a D7 chord would be labeled as the 5 7 chord, as it is built on the fifth scale degree and serves as the dominant chord resolving to the tonic chord B flat. What? No! In B flat major, D7 is also the 5 of 6. G minor is the 6 in B flat major. D7 is a secondary dominant. I apologize for the mistake. You are correct. In the key of B flat major, the D7 chord is a secondary dominant, resolving to the 6 chord G minor, and therefore it should be labeled as the 5 7 of 6. Thank you for correcting me. Okay, what is F7 in the key of D flat major? In the key of D flat major, an F7 chord would be the 3 7 chord as it is built on the third scale degree and serves as the median chord resolving to the tonic chord D-flat. No, the 3-7 is a very weird chord. F7 is most probably a secondary dominant. So which one is it? And that 
was chat GPT. Very impressive, but probably the dumbest student that I've ever had. You might think that having all the information in the world will help it resolve the analysis, but it seems to me that this thing is more about semantics and spitting out information that she was trained on rather than on being a master of induction or deduction. What bothers me is that many people are gonna think they have a tool that can help them find answers to everything. But what they don't have is the certainty that those answers are valid. Not yet anyways, but luckily for us musicians, there's Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro.